Uh, I mean, it has been just a remarkable period of growth, hasn't it? Oh, it's been seismic shifts. It's been incredible. We've been tracking the market and, uh, and we've got historical data going back. And yeah, in recent history, there hasn't been anything like this. Welcome to Building Perspective, the Master Builders SA podcast. I'm your host, Will Frogley. Join me as I speak with some characters in the building construction industry. Master Builders Insurance Brokers is where the building and construction industry goes for specialist advice. We know the right insurance cover is essential to the success of builders of all sizes. And we're here to help you understand, select and manage the right cover for your business. How do you know you've got the right cover? You trust the industry specialists. It seems over the past two years, everyone's been talking about property and how much it's been booming in South Australia. Uh, but with rising interest rates, uh, people are wondering what's uh, coming up in the years ahead. So a great person to come in and, and talk about that today is Ben Russ, who's Head of Planning and Delivery at Point Data. Ben, welcome to our podcast. Thanks for having me, Will. Great to see you here, mate. And probably a, a good starting point is for you just to tell us a bit about what uh what Point Data actually does. Yeah, excellent. Um, so Point Data are a, a, a locally based uh, prop tech. Um, we've got a national presence, um, but yeah, we uh, uh, effectively create data and algorithms that uh, service the, the very broad property industry, builders, investors, um, developers. So yeah, that's uh, effectively what we do. We've got three key building blocks which uh, which power our, our business. One is an automated valuation model, and that is uh, a, a effectively a model that values all of the houses across uh, South Australia every week. So as you alluded to before, it's been really interesting times in the property market, and we've been tracking what's been happening, and obviously massive growth over the past two years starting to flatten, starting to slightly fold down, and our AVM allows us to track that. We've also got a, uh, a, an algorithm that calculates the development potential of properties, uh, residential properties across South Australia, and that's a really exciting, uh, unique um, set that we've got, um, and we've been using that to, uh, to service builders and developers and giving uh, them an understanding of what they can subdivide their property down into. So that's the key building blocks of of what we do and uh, and who Point Data are. And I've got obviously got a subscription to Point Data, and I find it a very useful useful platform. Your comments about the market here in South Australia. I mean, historically, South Australia has tended to be just gradual slow growth. We haven't had the huge booms and busts that uh, can happen in other parts of the world. Uh, I mean, it has been just a remarkable period of growth, hasn't it? Oh, it's been seismic shifts. It's been incredible. We've been tracking the market and, uh, and we've got historical data going back. And yeah, in recent history, there hasn't been anything like this. Um, I mean, if you turn your mind back to two years ago at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of doom and gloom. Everyone saying property prices are going to crash through the floor. Um, and the exact opposite happened. We saw, you know, 45 uh, percent growth in, uh, in in property prices, basically across all of metropolitan uh, Adelaide. Not every area saw the the, the massive growth. Yeah, there's uh, different pockets that uh, that have different influences, but in general, it was uh, unprecedented growth. So incredible to see. And, you know, I certainly was on the roller coaster myself, uh, you know, probably May 2020. Um, uh, with my growing family, I, I needed a, a bigger place. So my wife and I actually sold our units and we were absolutely devastated at the price we got for the units at the time. And uh, but, but then, you know, we bought our family home, um, you know, a month later and everyone was telling us we we're absolutely crazy to be buying then. And to be honest, I didn't want to buy them myself, but I was trying to get set up for our, our second child's birth and it turned out to be the best move we ever could have made. Uh, a bit of luck there for you, Will. Because, Definitely luck. Yeah. I'd like to say it was my intelligence uh, <laughs> uh, that to pick the market there, but it was just pure luck. Your intricate knowledge of what was happening in the market. No, pure but, luck, yeah, mate. It's, it's, pure yeah. luck. And look, as I said, um, so many forecasters um, were predicting doom and gloom. Um, and yeah, the, the exact opposite thing happened. So it's really important to have a, 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 a retrospective and a historical view of things and go back and try and understand what the influences there uh, were. And I think we're starting to understand um, some of those uh, big influences. But uh, again, as you alluded to at the beginning of this uh, podcast, the, uh, the incoming uh, and, and recent uh, interest rate rises 
are starting to have uh, an impact on property prices and probably correcting some of them back to levels that uh, that are more more reasonable um, and how that plays out over the, uh, the the coming 12 months especially with the uh, the, the requirement uh, to get that immigration coming back in. Obviously, skill shortages uh, are a really pertinent um, aspect of, uh, of your industry. And so what impact that'll have, it'll be the balance between interest rate rises and incoming migration to potentially keep things a bit steady. But as I said, that's a prediction. How it actually plays out is uh, to be seen. I have to say, uh, everyone's talking about inflation now and interest rates, but Anyone who's, who works in our industry has seen it firsthand for a good 18 months plus right now. And that's why when the Reserve Bank was was saying, no, we're not going to raise the cash rate till 2024 or 2025 or, or whatever it was they were saying, it just seemed like madness to anyone in our industry because we were just looking at the price of uh, you know steel, timber, et cetera, going through the roof. And being such a massive industry, we just couldn't see any possible way that the cash rate wasn't going to go up. But I guess... You know the the market is starting to cool off a bit um, with those interest rate rises, and I think the um, correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but I think I saw the other day that the the median uh, house price in Adelaide had actually gone down for the first time in a long time. Is that correct? For the for the first month, yes, that's correct. If you look at what's happened over the past three months, it's probably still on on, on an upward um, trend in in general, but yeah, some pockets have gone down more than others. Specifically, what we've been seeing in the inner southern and inner eastern suburbs, they've probably started to cool or decelerate um, a, a little bit more than other areas. But they're also the areas that saw hugely significant growth over the past two years. So what I'm seeing and predicting is still more of a correction uh, in the market. And there are still pockets that are going up. You know, your, uh, your, your, particularly your, your northern and, and southern suburbs, which still offer really good value. You know, they have increased, but from a home buyer's perspective, if you can get in and, and affordability is always, um, you know, the, 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 the big question at the moment, but there's still some really good opportunities for, for home buyers in those areas that aren't going to um, crash as the market kind of goes through the floor, if that's what people are predicting. Yeah, Adelaide certainly still presents very good value compared with all the other capital cities, I think. We really do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely we do. And um, yeah, we don't typically follow the uh, the huge shifts and patterns that the eastern suburbs do. Another really interesting thing and a, and a key thing of the Adelaide market uh, in particular is the development opportunities that are still out there. So there's still a lot of um, infill development opportunities, and that's come about through uh, uh, you know a long tail of, of government policy, and uh, particularly the, uh, the development plans and the planning design code that's come in. So there are development opportunities out there, and um, if you are hoping to get into the property market now, you buy something now, you live in it for a while, and then you have options uh, potentially on what purchase you've made to potentially develop down the track. I certainly don't want to downplay interest rate rises because I know they're something we're definitely concerned about and they impact a lot of people, um, their ability to repay their mortgages, et cetera. Um, but the, the the cash rate's still quite low historically, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, I'm not an economist by any stretch of the imagination. I leave that to people who are uh, much more intelligent than myself. But yes, no, it is. And that's why uh, I suppose we needed to have the interest rate rises that um, that we're seeing now. As you said, there was market forces that needed to be brought under control. But yes, uh, it still is historically low. A bit of a shock potentially for those people that have um, purchased in the in the past 12 months, particularly at those higher rates their investment, they might be seeing going slightly down. And at the same time, they're making higher interest payments on, on, their, uh, on their properties. So yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly something that, uh, that needs to be continued to track. And uh, I'll leave that to the, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia. You mentioned the planning and design code earlier, Ben. Now, obviously, uh, getting planning approval is a massive issue for everyone in, in our industry. The planning and design code's been in for about 18 months now. I mean, how do you think it's tracking? Oh, that's a, an excellent question, Will. So I'll go right back to 18 months ago when the planning and design code um, came in. We at Point Data did an assessment whereby we compared the development 
potential or the infill potential of development plans, which was the, uh, the, the old system, and compared it to the planning design code. And what we saw as a result of that analysis was actually an increase in the development potential or the properties that could be um, subdivided. And that went from about uh, about 110,000 properties across metropolitan Adelaide up to about 155,000. So with that increase in potential, you would have expected at this point to see uh, an increase in deposited um, subdivided parcels. But the market hasn't been operating normally uh, over the past uh, 18 months, obviously the pandemic and what we've just discussed before. So we've seen a little bit of a downturn in parcels uh, and subdivided parcels um, over that period as well. But those that are being subdivided, they're getting slightly higher yield. So all of that plays out in different ways. Attributing all of that to the planning and design code is, uh, is probably a bit, bit difficult given the, the, the market that we've been in at the moment, but it's, uh, it's been a really interesting analysis. And um, yeah, the planning and design code still has, a, still has a way to go and a way to play out, I think. Absolutely, it does. Uh, it, it's certainly a, a frustration for quite a few of our members in that I guess they see it's not really doing what it was intended to do to make it easier, more efficient, those types of things. So I know the government's got a review coming up. What do you think might come out of that review? Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, a really good question. So I think the timing of the review is quite pertinent. I think the timing right now for it is ripe and ready. As I said, we've had uh, the planning and design code in for about 18 months. So there should be an understanding of the, the machinations and generally the planning industry and planners, I think, are quite au fait with the, uh, the actual content and the machination uh, of the planning and design code. So there needed to be that settling period and that time that the, the industry got used to it. And I think we've got to that point. But now it is time for a, a, a bit of a, a deeper dive and a critical review of what it actually means in terms of uh, building outcomes. There, I know that the review will be looking at uh, a, a broad range of things, but a key part of that will be looking at the, uh, the, the criteria and the development criteria within the planning design code that influences on um, infill, parking, trees, canopy, heritage and character. There's some of the, the, the key, I suppose, consternations of, uh, of the community uh, and some within the planning industry. But I'd hasten to add to that that any decisions made around the machinations of that to try and redress um, some of those concerns needs to be considered in the whole and uh, it needs to do that winners and losers analysis of what the actual development outcomes are going to be. And there are scenario levers that you can pull and assess and kind of look at within the system and before making any decisions and those policymakers, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd urge them to make sure that they've done a full and thorough review before jumping at any uh, decisions to to change uh, back or wind back some of the development opportunities that yeah, come about from the code. Ex excellent advice there, Ben. I couldn't agree with you more on that one. I think it's it's important to note that when the planning reform process started, we were living in very different times. Um, you know, it was pre-COVID, and and we've really seen a, a very big change in the market since COVID. Um, before, there was a very big push on infill. People wanted to live as close to the city as possible, quite strong demand for townhouses, uh, apartments, that type of thing. Since COVID, we've seen a very big shift away where there's really big demand for greenfields now, space, living in the country. And the fact that working from home has become um, normalised for a lot of people now is, is driving that. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see, isn't it, whether people keep pushing that choice or whether it reverts back as COVID dies down, whether people uh, revert back to wanting to live close to the city, isn't it? That's an excellent point there. So yeah, I um, I think that the, the planning review would need to take those market forces into consideration. And it's been a, a very interesting time, as you say, but I think, um, uh, I suppose what my uh, professional opinion would be that, that there needs to still be that balance. There still needs to be those opportunities uh, for, for people who want to live where they want to live. Uh, and infill is going to be a really important part of those, those choices and, uh, and opportunities. 
I've uh, obviously being a, a, a planner myself um, for all my sins. I'm not sure what I did wrong to, to, to get into that industry, <laughs> but I see good and bad examples of, of infield development. And, and some of that is a result of the, uh, the, the policies. Some of it is uh, sometimes some design iterations that, uh, that probably need to be reviewed as well. So typically what will happen is that people will look at those bad examples or the bad outcome and say that, you know, got to throw out the system because looking at those. But on the balance, I think that a majority or, or, or a good lot of development opportunities and in infill has been fantastic. And as I said, it leads back to that wanting to give people choices across the city and uh, and having really good urban design outcomes. That's an excellent point, Ben. The ch we need the right mix. Uh, there needs to be choice, good options for South Australians, regardless of what their personal preferences are. So, you know, whilst we've seen really strong demand for people to live in areas like south of the city, in the hills, uh, around the Flura Peninsula, area, in the north, areas like that, there's still plenty of people who want to live close to the city as well. So uh, we've, we need to make sure that there's good, affordable options for people, regardless of uh, where they want to be in the market. Spot on. Couldn't add more to that. Yep. So Ben, um, tell us a bit more about um, Point Data and what they can offer Master Builders members. Yeah, excellent. Um, so we've been working with Master Builders for a, a number of years now, and the, the offers which we um, are giving to the members are always evolving. Uh, I suppose the key one, which we've got uh, out at the moment, and this relates back to our ability to determine what the subdivision potential of properties is, and it's a, a product which we call development site alerts. Mm -hmm. So as you know, many people jump on their phone every morning and they look at the realestate.com or the domains or whatever the, the platforms are, and they, they want to find those nuggets of gold um, that are coming on the market at any one time. And they scroll through everything that's been listed. What we do is look at all of them, take out and identify those ones that are developable via our algorithm. And then we provide information on every day. We email out an alert saying, these are the ones that you want to be looking at if you're looking at finding a subdividable property. So it's basically doing a little bit of that legwork um, and really honing down in on those developable properties. We've actually got a free uh, two-month trial, no obligation trial, uh, offering to uh, MBA uh, SA members at the moment. So if there's interest in that, please contact us at, uh, at Point Data. That's great to hear, Ben. And I know personally I've, I've used you know Point Data services and I've, I've found them very useful. Uh, certainly when I was looking at doing a few things in, in the market, it's a, a great service you provide to the members and everyone else. Um, and I think today it's been a, a very interesting chat. Everyone's interested in this issue at the moment about oh, well, a lot of issues around the, the planning and design code, about where the property market's going, about interest rates, about development opportunities in South Australia. So I think you've been a very timely and important guest and it's been great to have you on our program. Appreciate it. Thanks, Will. No worries, Ben. Cheers. Thanks for joining me on Building Perspective. For more information on Master Builders or our guests, please visit our website at mbasa.com.au.